I'm joined by Kabir from NewNet, and we're going to go through a little bit of a demo that they had at Rare Bloom about their platform, how it's going to work. I'm pretty interested in this one as well. I didn't get to see it during the event, but Kabir was kind enough to join me after to just take me through the demo, and I'll share it with you on the screen here as well. So Kabir, thank you for joining me again. Thanks for inviting. So let's go through the demo here. So what exactly are we looking at at the moment? Uh, so the thing that we demoed uh, d during this event is basically the main component of the platform uh, in, uh, in a yeah, demo prototype version, which was just, just released now, a few days ago. And the main component of the platform is what we call device management service, which is a small program that has to be installed on each uh, compute device that, that wants, let's say, or that the owner wants to contribute to NuNet platform. And that device exposes, well, device management service, right? So that service or program, it exposes all the protocols and APIs that NuNet is building in order for computers to connect to each other, to connect to the network, yeah. to be able to communicate in peer-to-peer -peer network, to be able to deploy algorithms and uh, yeah, AI workflows, computer workflows from NuNet platform. So basically, yeah, it does everything. You, you install it, it connects your computer to the platform, yeah. basically exposes everything that we're doing. The thing is, well, well, it's, it's, not, it's, it's never final, meaning that since we are always um, uh, developing the platform, and it will always be developed in terms that we will be developing protocols and we'll be adding things into APIs. Therefore, the, the components itself will also be like updated constantly. And we are working with uh, uh, basically life cycle of the, of the platform and versioning of this component so that we can uh, control what kind of features we implement, what kind of features are breaking and what kind of features we deploy into the test network, development network, and the production network. Because on the production network, we have to make sure that everything is stable. On the development yeah. network, we deploy all the cutting edge features so that people could test it and we could uh, run all the regression tests. Yes. So this is what we demonstrated. Okay. And the, the main purpose of this demo was uh, not only to show what we did, but to attract people to start using it, start testing it, and get feedback from them how it works and how it doesn't work, and basically to develop further. Because in order for the platform to develop, we need we need community participation, or users' participation, in a pretty pretty deep technical level, at least in the beginning. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is actually a very major milestone for you. This is when the users can actually join the platform, understand it, and participate in your ecosystem. I remember you saying um, people, when participating, could get rewarded with uh, new net tokens. Is that, is that still correct? Yes. So we, uh, I think last month, we started, uh, we launched a, what we call new net and, and drops program, which is designed. So the program is basically a framework how we are going to uh, reward any community members or any people who will uh, participate in the development of the platform, which can be many, many angles, including technical. Yeah. And the end drops, as the words say, we, we drop uh, NTX, certain amounts. So we, we design campaigns where we, we design amounts of, of, of NTX for certain uh, contribution to the platform, depending on what exactly we incentivize at, at, at each moment. And the kind of the final, well, the goal of this program is to have certain reputation system. It's the beginning of a reputation system on the platform where we can uh, uh, lock activities of community members or, yeah, participants. participants or developers. We can lock those activities into the NTFs and then based on those activities, we can uh, reward people participating with the NTX token. So that is, that is very important. Yeah. for us because what we want we want to attract as many interested let's say people developers not only developers but the contributors because I mean intelligence is out there we cannot we cannot do everything it's not that we are smartest people in the room or in the world not far from that yeah. however the smartest people are around and we want to attract 
we want to attract interested people, interested developers, uh, community members, influencers. Yeah. Well, I hope hopefully at this uh, Rare Bloom event you did attract a lot of people. But let's go over the demo that we have here as well. So this looks like a, a Git repository that we're looking at at the moment. And I'm assuming this is where um, a participant can get the code from and start um, implementing it. What, what we're seeing now yep. is all our all our development is is, is we are basing it on GitLab, uh, so it's open source. And what we were seeing is just our the whole Nunet project and all the all the code that we are doing, whether it's experimental, not experimental, release, etc. It's there. So, and then we have a bunch of repositories. One of repository is domain management service. And there, if a repository has any releases, they are available there. So every 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 release of domain management service is versioned and it's uh, uploaded there. So then we will interact with <coughs> testers in order to send them links or send them notifications that the new release is out, so yeah. that people could download and install. So what we are seeing now, can we yeah, pause so this? Downloading yeah, the pack downloading the package there. Uh, exactly. So we download a person downloads a package. Currently, it's a Debian package. So we, we run it on Linux. However, we are, yeah we are basically we already have a multi build, multi architecture build to to build Linux packages for different architectures. But we're looking forward to build packages for different operating systems so that basically a, a, any operating system a person with any operating system could could. Uh, Download and install um, device management uh, service. So yeah. So right now, we download. We just install a package on the Linux. Install all the dependencies. Can, uh, right. So it's for, for, for Linux users, it's just uh, no brainer. You just install a package. Yeah. It's pretty pretty easy and straightforward uh, for any uh, staple operator or anyone that that's, uh, understands servers. And since since this this use case is uh, directed to staple operators, we know that everybody is working on Linux, so that's that's yeah. why we build this package first. Yeah. <clears throat> so now when the package is built, there is a CLI, I mean command NuNet exposed to an operating system, which Basically, we have a bunch of um, options. Nunet is connection con uh, CLI connection to the to the this DMS. I mean domain. What's that? Device management service. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we have bunch of uh, bunch of commands with that, which is we can check how much uh, resources available are on the computer that the the package is installed. So just Nunet available gives you a list of of, of how powerful is the computer. Yeah. In uh, yeah, exact numbers, meaning that this is a maximum number that a person can contribute to NoNet. Yeah. However, uh, a compute provider is not, let's say, obliged to give the whole computer or to to, to sort of provide the whole the whole computing power of, yeah. of the whole machine. Yeah. We can decide to give for half or something like this. So then we have yeah, and if wallet command NoNet wallet command means to get cur uh, current wallet address. Which is installed on board. Actually, there is a possibility to uh, to uh, so when, when a person um, on board's computer, we ask to give a wallet address where the rewards for the compute usage will be sent by yeah. NuNet. And since we are blockchain agnostic, right now it's on Cardano, so we ask for the Cardano wallet address in order to, to have this, uh, to connect it to Tokenomics API. In general, since Nunet is blockchain agnostic, we basically, depending on how many blockchains we'll uh, expose through the Tokenomics API, there will be an option to choose any blockchain. Yeah. And Nunet should, uh, I mean, it, it will, uh, the platform will sort it out. <laughs> and yeah. what, what it what it enables actually is that different people will connect uh, may sort of connect to different blockchains with their uh, device management services, yeah. and then Nunet will settle the payments for. It could be that one computational process will require payments to different blockchains. Yeah. So Nunet, this 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 um, device management service 
it will handle this under the hood. That's so people, yes. So now, now you can attract users from all different ecosystems more easily. Basically, yes. So from our perspective, we are doing computation. And we are using blockchain or NuNet platform using blockchain for what is needed. Of course, of course there, there will be a little bit bigger problem. I mean, it's not a problem; it's a challenge, yeah. which is solvable. When we will, because we sign smart contracts and escrow accounts when when computer and uh, the algorithm or the one who requests computing and the one who provides um, provides compute power, they basically enter into contract yeah. and agree on the price. So when this is uh, multi-chain, it will be more challenging to make it. Yes. Okay. Right. But right now it is done on on Cardano. Yeah. So yes. So uh, yeah. Basically, people can uh, can uh, generate new wallet or give their own wallet that they're using for for for, for getting rewards from Nunet. Uh, the command on board is exactly that. I think. Yeah. The command on board allows you to uh, indicate how much memory CPU uh, one wants to, to sort of provide to NUNET for usage. Yeah. Uh, now, NUNET channel is an important uh, parameter. Because NUNET channels means what I mentioned um, some time ago, is these different it's a kind of virtual private networks on which we will be running development network, production network, or any any network that we want to test certain features, for example. Yes. So that may be basically it's open-ended uh, list. And when we will um, we will start communicating with the community developers and asking to test certain features, which is not yet done but coming soon, based on this on this uh, package, yeah. we will uh, we will inform or will indicate what kind of network needs to be joined in order to, to, to sort of run these things. And these networks are basically, they are isolated from each other. They are simply different networks. Yes. So when a person, let's say, connects to, right now we have private alpha network yeah. on which we were running private alpha platform version. Yeah. Then we have development network on which we were testing private alpha. Yeah. The development network will just stay there. It will be just cutting edge. Then we will have a public alpha network and when people will join to these networks, they will see only only those computers which join those networks. They will not yes. see anything else. Yes. And then we come to a next I think command, which is it should be NUNET peers. Ah, this is an onboarding. So this is a command, like exact command that onboards computer with I believe how much memory it is. Uh, yeah, probably four gigas memory. Uh, CPU is yeah more or less half of what's what's available. Yeah. Uh, I believe now it will be uh, name of the of the channel, which is development uh, development um, network, and here is the address. So the address was generated new address with a with a command yeah. new net wallet new, that looks like a and then you just paste. Pardon? That looks like an Ethereum base yeah. address too. Yeah. And C, I believe that C means that we save it into the file. So, and th this is the metadata of the machine which saves somewhere securely, yeah. so that all other all the NuNet network can uh, basic platform can ask what what are the capabilities of the machine, and people will be able to change this via this command based right. on their preferences. Right. Uh, now we see that no, the DMS basically spawned a couple of, yeah, NuNet peer command, it lists all the computers that are right. connected to the network. Yeah. And that is that is the end of the demo, and that demonstrates how we are going to connect, uh, yeah, peer-to-peer -peer network to, how, how every machine in the network will know about uh, every other machine. So basically, the way it works, uh, we have the uh, DHT, which is distributed hash table yeah. on each, uh, device management service, so that and since it's so it's it's um, synchronized all the time yeah. between machines, so every machine knows addresses of all the other machines. So, which what it gives is that we can deploy compute workflows in a decentralized way. But every machine 
will know what are the what are the resource availabilities in the network and if it gets requests to deploy certain service, it can route this request to the next machine which has these resources. Yep. So, and by that, we do not need centralized component in order to deploy resources on, on Luna. Very nicely, very, very nicely done. Very short, very short uh, explanation, I yeah. think. Yeah. I can spend more time on that. Yeah, I can imagine. It, it will get very detailed. And I, I, I know it t would have taken quite a lot of engineering to get to this point as it is, but it looks, uh, from my point of view as an SPO, a very easy process to start spinning up and providing resources. What about the other side of the spectrum of um, uh, using the resources? So we need to test both ends. Is that that's correct? Uh, so right now this is, yeah, exactly. So this is providing resource and for using a resource, it's coming. Okay, all right. So, but basically it will also be CLI for this, for this um, I mean, for this use case. Yep. Again, based on the fact that we are targeting for this use case SPOs, which are technical enough to do that, uh, but the, also the goal to do this via CLI is that we will be able to, basically we would, actually we would like community developers to pick it up and to develop uh, user interfaces, yeah. which can connect to the domain uh, device management service using CLI and do everything that people can do with command line. And in this way, we can maybe have, let's say, alternative user interfaces based on what is needed. Okay. Prefer, prefer. You, you've set the challenge now. So now uh, we, we can see what um, is possible on the command line level. And now we can now build the interfaces, what we want as stateful operators uh, to join and uh, interact with the platform. Yes, and not only interfaces, but also request features that, that you would see useful in order to use a, okay. a product. All right, brilliant, Kabir. I'm pretty excited about all this. I will give it a go myself and see um, uh, how it works. And I'll give everyone a, another demo as well so that they can, if they're interested, they can participate in this ecosystem too. Kabir, it's been a pleasure catching up with you and meeting you in person. Uh, I know we were quite busy over the weekend with your presentations and everything as well, but it's really good to see you, meet you, and shake your hand. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.